Kucu. Ông dùng nhiều đất bạc to, các nhóm đại ca để đi sạm đại ca. Anh đang đào bịch cao chuyển từ nó cầm sạm bịch viên nó mốc cầm đang đào mà đang đào bịch ní, đào bay men cả, mà to cả tăng số lượng đào chụp bút sợi dây steel header. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. En fait, j'en ai presque terminé. Je vais reformuler ma dernière question à la Constitution de Langwing. Vous avez dit donc qu'il y avait un, un langage spécifique pendant la période du Kampuchea démocratique. Est-ce que ce langage vous l'avez vu et lu dans des documents émanant du centre, tels que des discours, des, des journaux, des documents institutionnels. Est-ce que vous l'avez trouvé dans ces documents écrits émanant du centre Ma deuxième question est la suivante. Est-ce que ce vocabulaire particulier au Kampuchea démocratique sur les mêmes thèmes ou sur des thèmes différents des documents écrits, est-ce que vous l'avez également noté dans les propos tenus par des cadres et des membres du parti Uh, yes, I would add, also among the ordinary population, both new and better. I would like to add to this third question. Thank you very much, Mr. Eder. I have answered it. My confederate team is going to ask some questions. My confederate team is going to ask some questions. บัดเอ่อขยมสมจิมิตซูโลกจักรอมโลกโลกสไลจักรอมไอ้สมจิมิตซูอ่าสัพเพียรอ่าเพียรกีนะเนาะไอ้ขยมบัดเอ่อเรา
bạt chấm nồi nước nhôm trong chỉ miền xuôi tha cà bạch chấm nốt cứ miền cà bạch chấm ta ở bạch sơn bàn lục bàn lứ đôi thả bàn lứ bàn đắng rồi mua ta mà giả ca sai chưa được gọi đói ta mà giả gọi đói ta miền thưa sự đây chỉ miền muối đây chai nhầm pi cà ăn vọt cồn nhiều bài và to pi cà không ai hóm bàn đọc liền này bà Um, I, I, I don't specifically recall whether that was the meeting of May 75 or the meeting of September 75. I think the meeting of May 75 was at the old Khmer Soviet Technical Institute. The Silver Pagoda meeting, if I recall correctly, wasn't until later in the year, maybe August or September. Um, so I'm not quite sure which set of decisions I can associate it with, or much less their implementation. Lớn nó cứ miền ca mật mình ao ý, miền tịp xa rồi môi miền ca chạy lôi chạy ấy nữa bà Ta ả nâng lột đài xa rồi chứ đưa bàn chụp ở tẹt đấy hả? Châm lời Well, prohibition of markets began by, if not before 1973, in at least some places, according to my recollection, and equally uh, the end of the use of the Khmer Republic currency, uh, which effectively meant the end of the use of all currency because it wasn't yet even planned to be replaced with anything else, also began by 73-74. So I think what happened after 17 April 75 was um, affirmation of the continuation of policy decisions that had already been made with regard to the liberated zones and which were confirmed as to be applied ไอ้กีปราบปราบนั้นตู้แต่งประเทศแต่มาลองคือโกกาแต่เธอตะลึกทิพย์ซานลุยกะนี่บัดลูกมันมันปานลึกลางเปียปอนกาประชุมมุ
excuse me, 17 April. Uh, again, to continue with the non-use of money, at least temporarily, um, to begin the process or to accelerate the process by which uh, Buddhist monks were no longer to be able to live off of alms, um, and also, last and certainly, certainly not least, um, to try and search out and uh, identify, search out, identify and execute those um, ranking military and civilian administrative and analogous people uh, who hadn't been caught in the initial uh, executions that occurred in the first week or two after 17 April 1975. ទៅអត់ដើម្បីចម្រាញ់បន្ទាប់អ្នកដែលគេ <coughs> Um, as I said, I'm not sure there was only one meeting. I think we're talking about a series of several, by which I mean two, three, four meetings in the latter part of May 1975, and maybe some that spilled over into the beginning of, of June 1975. <laughs> មានបានលើកពាក់ព័ន្ធនឹងគោលនយោបាយផ្សេងផ្សេងហើយ Um, yes, again, a process that began in certain ways before 17 April 75 and then intensified particularly from September, October 1975 and even more so thereafter into 76, 77 and 78 um, becoming increasingly uh, severe. គឺលក្ខណ៍ស្ថានភាពនឹងវិកាន់តែធ្វើឆ្ងល់ឡើងធ្វើឆ្ងល់ឡើងពីមិច្ឆ្នាំ <coughs> Um, some, uh, again, starting as early as 1973, um, I would call it kind of active discouragement, maybe compulsive discouragement of the practice of religion, but not its outright prohibition. Um, in some places, at least, a scattering of jobs so they wouldn't be concentrated uh, in particular areas. Um, the prohibition in some areas, again, on job holding certain kinds of uh, positions of political authority. Uh, but the picture before 75 and even after, certainly through to the end of 75, and in some ways beyond, is rather mixed. A lot of the early policies that could be described as anti jam or at least anti-Islamic were actually carried out by cadre who were themselves Jam. Um, and that continued to be significantly the case, I would say, through the end of 1975. Um, and 
to a lesser extent uh, as late as the middle of 1978, depending on the location, depending on the issue. ថាតើការអនុវត្តគូលនយោបាយនេះគឺធ្វើឲ្យប៉ះពាល់ទៅដល់ប្រជាជននឹងដល់កម្រិតណាដែលធ្វើឲ្យគាត់មានការបាក់
ពីទៅលំទៅលាយពេកបើសម្រាប់សាសៃធ្វើការឆ្លើយបញ្ជាក់ទៅលើចំណុចនេះវាពុំមានភាពច្បាស់លាស់ទេហើយមេធាវីគ
ในมนตรีรัฐบาลตลาการรวมรวมยิ่งมีหนึ่งมนตรีในองค์กรพิบกบพิเศษใส่หนึ่งในจุดนี้ของการจูนลูกสีเหตุเดอตลอดทุกการตีกระไรเด็กก็ถนัดในวิ่งจ่อไอ้หนึ่งอ่อยจีก็ตลอดประกันกระไรของเราใครกล้ามในขนมปุ๊บสัตว์มาการในวิ่งในประเทศไทยไอ้บ้านในมอปมบุญปรึกลูกสีเหตุเดอจะเชิญบ้านให้ทำเชิญลูกจะเชิญเจ้าบ้านอ่องยิมเรียบ้านตัดตัวในสำนักสมรภูมิกรมวิทยาการพิกัดลูกนุ่นชี้สมเอาอ่องยิมเรียตัดตัวจากในพอตังทมัยได้การสับในสักไข่กัมสักไซเดมีนฮาสเนียมทีซีได้ไปยูไปรอยไปสปีไอกาซาอีปีรอยการสุบุนจงไหลตีดอกมุ้ยไข่กะกระดาษชนะปีพอนดอกใบโดยอ่องยิมเรียบ้านยิมเรียบจุนเพียกีด้วยเฮยท่าอ่องยิมเรียนั่งพอดอกกะได้จุนเตอเพียกีเพียปอนโดยเจ้าสัปเรียนนั่งสัปมิตรวินอมกดำนางดำนางรับนิทเฟอสารนาตัวมอดลอยตบในขนมกันจำนวนการสัมนาการนี้บนตัวปีการตัดับให้กำได้ลูกสตีฟเฮเตอร์ได้นางสุริยดาวได้กรมมิตรวีนอมกดำนางดำนางรับนิจจอมไอเลนี่บานจอบเฮยดิฉันเอาเงินเรียบดอลวิติกาจุนเตยกรมดำนางสัปมิตรฮะประเดี๋ยวนี้ดำไปมีโอกาสในโครงการเพื่อสารนาตอบแต่หนังสำนาส้มหรือบอกกรมวิทยาการพิกัดในนุ่นชี้ได้มีคลำซ่าโดยหนึ่งขนมไอกระซ่าอีปีเรย์กาสุบุญดูดูนางทายเดี๋ยวนี้อาจจะตำรัตน์มีการจุดตัวต่อว่าปีมีปีอันตรายชีพการพิกัดในโลกนุ่นชี้ผสมช่วยโลกไทยมีปี Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. C'est simplement euh, une demande de, de savoir comment vous souhaitez procéder, puisque euh, la défense de Kyosampan ne s'est pas prononcée encore sur la requête euh, de euh, l'équipe de défense de Nantua que nous supportons. Et nous voulons savoir si vous préférez que nous, nous donnions nos arguments brièvement avant la réponse à des, à des bureaux des coprocureurs et des parties civiles, ou si vous souhaitez que nous intervenions après. Donc, je demande euh, l'avis la, de la Chambre sur la manière de procéder. มันช่างขยมสมเอาลูกกระเทียนเอาจีเยบอลถ้าเอาขยมถอยอย่างไหมมาบ่ากรมวิทยาการพิกัดในโลกเขตสมพรเมียนมอมน้องโดยเฉพาะสมเชื่อมาดำไปสมรู้ตอนในเตวิธีในการประพฤติตื้อในมีเพียบขอบประชีในเรื่องสำนักสมให้นางประเจ้าจุมเฮาในเรื่องสำนักสมเชื่อมุ่นมุ่นนางเพียบปีบางครั้งทิศบางฮันในมาเตจิบอลบักลุนเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข้าใจว่าคุณเข Euh, de, euh, relatif notamment à, euh, euh, au fait de tout le poche frais et euh, la demande d'audition de, euh, euh, du témoin TCW 882, si je ne m'abuse. Nous, euh, euh, encore une fois, euh, Nous soutenons l'équipe de Nunchea sur sa demande. Et pourquoi nous la soutenons Depuis le début, dans le cadre des audiences relatives aux documents et notamment aux vidéos, nous avons toujours indiqué que le problème d'une vidéo, lorsque nous n'avions pas l'intégralité des interviews et qu'il pouvait y avoir des coupes, vous vous souviendrez la toute première audience de documents sur lorsqu'il y avait des questions de vidéos, des extraits, 
d'interview de M. Kiosantan, nous nous étions opposés au versement en preuve de ces vidéos, en expliquant que lorsqu'il n'y avait qu'un extrait, on pouvait ne pas avoir le sens de l'intégralité de ce qui a été dit. Très clairement, dans le cas d'espèce, nous sommes dans ce cas de figure où vous avez des extraits vidéo qui, sortis de leur contexte et sortis du contexte de euh, nombreuses heures de tournage, ne permettent pas d'avoir l'ensemble du sens et de ce qui a été dit. Et dans ces conditions, euh, le fait d'avoir le producteur réalisateur de euh, euh, ce film euh, qui puisse venir expliquer dans quelles conditions euh, ont été effectuées les coupes euh, de ce film, dans quelles conditions euh, le, les personnes interrogées ont pu euh, exprimer des choses supplémentaires, dans quelles conditions d'autres personnes interrogées ont pu apporter des éléments de preuve différents et en l'occurrence à décharge, sont des éléments extrêmement importants. Euh, il va de soi que euh, l'email dont fait état l'équipe de Nyonchea est arrivé extrêmement récemment et que euh, de fait la défense ne pouvait pas s'en prévaloir auparavant. C'est un élément nouveau, un élément qui euh, permet d'avoir des éléments discutatoires pour l'ensemble de la défense, puisqu'encore une fois, nous sommes dans le cadre d'une euh, procédure euh, avec une entreprise criminelle commune qui est visée. Donc, ce qui est discutatoire, euh, en l'occurrence sur les faits, évoqué dans ce film l'est également pour un monsieur que s'en pend et dans ces conditions nous souscrivons entièrement et pleinement à la demande de l'équipe de Nunchea. Encore une fois, c'est bien la preuve de ce que nous avions indiqué depuis le départ, à savoir que parfois, quand nous avons des éléments documentaires hors contexte, nous n'avons pas l'ensemble des éléments. Aujourd'hui, nous avons la possibilité d'avoir des éléments complémentaires et il va de soi que pour une bonne justice et pour une bonne équité du procès, il convient que l'on puisse avoir ces éléments dans le cadre des débats devant cette chambre. Thank you, Mr. President. And on behalf of the co-prosecutors, let me say first that, for clarity, there are in fact three aspects to this application. One is for an email to be admitted into evidence. The second is for the Chamber to conduct an investigation pursuant to Rule 93. And the third, in fact, is the one that my friend just addressed, which relates to the summoning of an individual who, whose pseudonym we understand to be TCW382. So I will refer to that individual uh, throughout my submissions as TCW382. This is the individual whose email, of course, we received last week. Also relevant is TCW720, which is the other individual involved more directly in the preparation of, of the videos that have been referred to. And before I give our response, can I indicate, Your Honours, that yesterday afternoon we forwarded to Your Honours through the legal offices and also to the defence and other parties nine files which are essentially copies of publicly available interviews with the gentleman to whom this request pertains. In summary, before I address the request in more detail, the prosecution opposes two of the three requests. In particular, we oppose the request that the email be admitted into evidence, and we also oppose the request that the individual, that is TCW382, be summoned to give evidence. We agree in part with the third request, uh, albeit in a modified form, and I will come to that in a few moments. 
by way of an introduction, let me say, Your Honours, that perhaps like you, we were somewhat surprised to see this apparently unsolicited communication from an individual who has, in the past, refused to cooperate with the school when asked to provide materials that he had made available in the public domain. So it is somewhat puzzling as to the motivations behind this request. Also noting that instead of following perhaps a more appropriate channel of directing information to the court, if he feels he has information that may assist, he does so by contacting one of the council. It is our submission that this individual has little, if anything, to offer as a witness, let alone expert in this trial. And it is pertinent to look at what involvement he has had in collecting information that this request pertains to and what his general qualifications and experience are. This is a, an individual who is a talented filmmaker, one might say, but he's certainly no expert in Khmer Rouge history or in CPK authority structure and policies. If you look at documents seven and six that we that we forwarded uh, without going into them in any great detail uh, they, they they show that his background was first as a musician and then as someone making general documentaries for television covering a wide variety of topics He's currently working, in fact, on two documentaries that are entirely unrelated, it appears, to Cambodia. He has no professional qualifications that we know of that relates to the history of Cambodia or the Khmer Rouge movement. Again, as best as we can tell, he has conducted no scholarly research into Khmer Rouge history or policies. He has done no field work whatsoever beyond the work that is in fact led by TCW 720. And it appears from the materials that are available in the public domain is that he holds certain rather naive views about the state of research and material available in the Khmer Rouge. If I can take your honours to just one example that illustrates this well. In document number one, on the first page, this is a Radio Prague interview. He is asked, what has TCW 720 achieved with this quest of his response point. Well, he has achieved a much greater understanding and amount of information about the Khmer Rouge regime than has ever been gathered before. This gentleman is apparently unaware of hundreds of statements that have been given by various leaders of Democratic Kampuchea and Khmer Rouge Padre, of the extensive research that, that has been done over decades by people such as Steve Hedder, David Hawke, David Chandler, Ben Kiernan, Michael Vickery, Philip Short and others. He thinks he's gathered more information that has ever been gathered before. I'm not sure if I can speak on behalf of this group, but it would appear to me that um, their combined experience of well over 100 years of research into the Khmer Rouge might perhaps negate that. There are also 
misrepresentations in this gentleman's email, which go both to his credibility and to the way in which you should view the evidence in the form of the email or the purported evidence that the defense is putting forward. At paragraph 2 of E294, you have the text of the email where the gentleman suggests the following in relation to Nguyen Chia. Quote, he did not agree that top one mall officers had been killed. What he said was that half a dozen one mall cabinet and top officials had been put through revolutionary due process and condemned to death by a military tribunal which from memory Nguyen Chia was not part of. That is an allegation in relation to what Nguyen Chia says in the DVD. On the DVD itself, in the part called One Day at Poetry, and this is document E186.1 at 22 minutes, the following exchange takes place. TCW 720 interviewing Nguyen Chia. Quote, uncle, what were the political orders for the top four or five leaders of the previous regime? Nguyen Chia. They were to be liquidated. They deserved the severest penalty. They betrayed the nation to foreigners. You juxtapose those two passages, Your Honours, and what you see is that TCW 382 apparently has a view of the facts that are even more exculpatory than Nguyen Chia himself. Without even going into his motives in sending this communication, he is clearly wrong about his own DVD. Now, moving on to the extent of the gentleman's research, and this addresses my friend's arguments in relation to him being called as a fact witness or an expert. The documents we have sent through illustrate that, in fact, he is at best a fellow traveller and a documentary maker, while someone else is leading a project to collect information. Documents number five and six contain statements by TCW382 indicating that he only came to Cambodia in 2006 with a plan to do a film, as he says, and it was at that point that he met TCW 720, who had already done six or seven years of work. So he, at that point, joined the project. But having joined it, he, of course, was not present for the most important and this goes to the heart of our friend's application. If you look at file number one, and again, I referred to this earlier, this is the radio Prague interview. It is clear from this gentleman's own admissions or statements that he had very little to do with key interviews. And, he, and I will read this because it is significant in our submission. Question. TCW 72's method is over many years to build up the trust of these people. Did the presence of your cameras impede his interviews at all? Answer. No. By and large, the exclusive and extremely secret revelations that take place in the film are done by him alone. A little bit further down, but for the very secret things with Nguyen Chia, and also there is a scene in the film where Nguyen Chia meets two killers, and they all discuss why they all were involved in such killing. This is the kind of thing that really only TCW 720, a Cambodian that is trusted by these people, 
could do. So by his own information, Your Honours, this individual was not present, contrary to Nguyen Chia's submissions, in the most important and most relevant of interviews. As for his knowledge of tour portray, the video itself says at 48 seconds that it was TCW 720 that had investigated the massacre for many years and identified people whom he was able to interview in relation to that massacre. So certainly, Your Honours, this individual neither has the expertise nor factual knowledge in our submission that would warrant him being called to describe for you what people have had to say. There are other reasons why we have certain reservations or concerns about the court's ability to obtain any information from this, from this individual. And it has to do again with statements that he has made in the past. If you look at document number two at page one, The individual makes it clear that he views these proceedings as, is, as incompatible with a truth and reconciliation process of which his film is a variant. And he says, the question then becomes to, do you want truth or justice? You can't have both. I'll leave the ridiculousness of that proposition to everyone else to judge for themselves. But furthermore, in document number three, an interview with the independent newspaper at page one, the TCW 382 confirms that the information that TCW 720 obtained was obtained on the condition that it not be used against Nguyen Chia. And he says, in relation to the interviewees, and I quote, they engage in a process with you and you must stick to that promise. As a result of not bowing to the court, we are now seen as an independent party in Cambodia, and more Khmer Rouge people are willing, are, are talking to us, and they will not talk to the court. TCW720 confirms that position in document number four, which is a CNN article, where he says at page two, if I, quote, if I give this kind of stuff to the court, it means that I betray Nguyen Chia and I betray the killers. So, Your Honours, we have indeed great doubts as to the willingness of these individuals to provide any information that you may seek. And that brings me to a summary uh, of our position and, and my conclusion. First, in relation to the email, we oppose its admission. It is not suitable to prove the fact that it purports to prove. It is a, it is a statement of what an individual says no one cheers. No one cheer is in this court and can speak for himself. And I've just demonstrated for your honours that this individual's interpretation of no one cheers words is unreliable. Also, it would be entirely improper to admit an email from, that says what somebody else says if that same individual is unwilling to provide the raw material or the video footage that apparently contains or may contain other statements of interest. So the email is, a, is not reliable, it is not suitable to prove the facts it purports to prove. 
And it's therefore not be admitted. It is of no evidential value whatsoever. As to the summoning of the individual, for the reasons that I've stated, we oppose that application. He has no knowledge of relevant facts. You cannot compare this individual to people like Steve Hedder or Francois Ponchot or Philip Short, whether, be, whether they be viewed as fact witnesses or experts. These are people who have conducted years of original research. Ponchot and Hedder, in fact, are witnesses of fact during the democratic and mature period. But what's more, all of these individuals have willingly provided material to the court, and it is on the basis of that material that they were called to testify. He is certainly no expert, and I think that requires no further elaboration. Now, as to the third aspect of the application in relation to making inquiries, now, let me say that we will always support the Nguyen Chia team as we will always support the Q San Pan team in reasonable requests to obtain information that on its face appears to be probative and relevant or to have any exculpatory, potentially exculpatory value for them. So we do not oppose a request for information being sent to this individual and to TCW 720, whereby in our respectful submission, they should be requested not to provide comment, not pro to provide interpretation of what people said, but rather to provide the material that is in their possession. If they have written statements or if they have raw video footage, that in any way relates to the matters before Your Honours, then we do not oppose, obviously, we do not oppose Your Honours obtaining that material. But I do return to my reservations that I expressed earlier. It is quite likely, in our opinion, looking at the facts, that your request for information, which is what we suggest that it should be, will be met either with a refusal or with silence, as was the case with the co-investigating judges. I should state for the record, for, for, for clarity, that the request should be for raw footage, not for selective cutting of material, and in our respectful submission, it should also be for the manuscript which led to the writing of the books of the book E152.2. Once that material is received, if it is received, we would submit that Your Honours could make arrangements for it to be confidentially provided to the parties, thereby addressing any commercial concerns that the owners of the material may have in relation to their financial interests, and then the parties can be invited to make submissions as to whether that material should be admitted, and secondly, whether anyone identified in that material should be called as a witness. But I do return to our reservations. Given the stage of the proceedings we're in, given this individual's prior refusal to cooperate with the court, we would encourage Your Honours to deal with this matter quickly. We have the individual's email address. He appears to be perfectly capable of communicating with when he feels like it. Your Honours should communicate an, an urgent request for, for information and proceed from there. If he is unwilling to provide the information or if he fails to provide it, Within a short period of time, then your honours should dismiss the request because on its face, E294 does not describe any evidence as it stands that your honours could admit in these proceedings. Those are our submissions. បាទសូមគ្រប់លោកប្រធានសូមគ្រប់លោកលោកស៊ីចាកម្មហើយនឹងភាគីទាំង
និយាយបានអត់ពីបញ្ហាពីទី 1 ផ្នែកជាច្រើននៃអ៊ីមែលរបស់គាត់មិនគួរនឹងអាចទទួលយកបានទេហើយការបកស្រាយបែបនេះគឺជាច្រើនលក្ខណៈនៃអ្នក
n'a jamais été proposée par la Défense auparavant. Elle n'est uniquement sur la base du mail de ce monsieur. Pourtant, si monsieur Nunché à lui estime depuis un an et demi que les extraits vidéo de ce DVD qui sont produits à l'audience ne sont pas ce qu'il a dit, je m'étonne que la défense de Nunchea ne vous ait pas fait cette demande article 93 depuis 18 mois. Et je note que cette demande intervient aujourd'hui uniquement sur la base de ce mail dont je continue de dire qu'il est complètement farfelu, dénué de pertinence et insusceptible d'établir ce qu'il entend démontrer. Donc en ce qui nous concerne, nous demandons le rejet des trois demandes, la première, principale, et les deux suivantes qui sont subséquentes et qui ne sont pas fondées. Merci. 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 Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just a, a procedural so, question. Uh, am I allowed to, to, to reply to these submissions? Or would you rather have to do that tomorrow morning? Because of the time. Uh, but I heard so much nonsense that I would really like to, re to reply. Sorry, uh, Judge Carragher, I couldn't help myself. I couldn't help myself. I couldn't help myself. I couldn't help บ่าอองจํารัสอนุญาตเลือกมีชีวิตการเปลี่ยนใครแต่ตามธรรมดาคืออองจํารัสมันอนุญาตโดยประเทศบันไดเหล่านี้ตามตํารวจสมบัติล
ខ្ញុំមានសាយវីដេអូដែលបញ្ជាក់សំបាត់ថាសកម្មភាពនៅ North Zone uh, Chief Ross Nim. So, uh, rather than uh, focusing on the first two or three paragraphs of uh, his email, uh, the last paragraph of his email is obviously much more important. Uh, I have indicated that as well last weekend. Uh, here it says, and I'll just quote it again, of course I know you know it, just for maybe also for the public. Uh, Lemkin says, by the way, regarding Coach Ray, this was a massacre ordered by Ross Nim, North Central Command. We have a mass of wealth of evidence about Nim's agenda, but have been so far unable to complete our second film. Now, this mass of uh, wealth of evidence obviously means with that uh, the, the hours of footage that I just referred to. The standard which is now uh, being uh, applied to according to prosecution is a standard that we haven't heard so far. There might be questions uh, of the probable value of this particular email, but the standards uh, are now uh, applied in a completely different manner when it comes to admitting this email. Um, there are dozens of, uh, of, of evidence where it is unclear how this evidence came about, whether it was a, whether this, this evidence was in fact um, um, uh, saying what, the, what, 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 what this particular witness or expert knew or whether he was uh, uh, giving conclusions. So we're all of a sudden changing uh, uh, the, the goalposts when it comes to the admittance standard. Most importantly, and uh, that is actually my, my, my main argument, we have to realize that um, Rob Lemkin approached us uh, by sending this email. He apparently uh, did not have a problem in forwarding uh, or, or presenting himself uh, and giving this information. It seems, and this is how I understand this email, that uh, the problem of not earlier uh, giving this information at the request of the investigating judges was that there seemed to be some sort of agreement with Minchia that he was not um, uh, giving this footage uh, to the, uh, the tribunal. It seems now we have a different situation. It seems now that he has information which might be exculpatory for Nunchia. And if Nunchia doesn't have a problem, if our client doesn't have a problem, if uh, uh, Lemkin and his co-producer will provide this additional footage, then there is uh, no reason anymore, it seems, for uh, Lemkin and his co-producer to actually provide that footage. We have a different situation than in 2011, where, uh, where it seems that the both producers were refusing to give uh, this footage because of the agreements with Nunchia. But now the situation is reversed. Uh, now they are saying that they are in a position of very important and if our client says, I have no problem uh, uh, if you uh, give this footage or this information uh, uh, to uh, the tribunal, then of course there is no, uh, uh, no 
But of course, the most simple way to uh, to be able to find out is if uh, if the chain is simply asked uh, uh, if Lemkin to uh, Now, of course, we are all aware of the fact that these proceedings are coming to an end. And uh, uh, we realize that. Um, uh, that it is the case, but it doesn't change the fact that at the last moment, it seems, there, is now, uh, there are now indications of the existence of very important exculpatory evidence. And just because of the fact that we are now in the end phase of this proceeding doesn't mean, doesn't mean we should not take this very seriously. Um, it is not, it, it's, it's maybe even quite rare in cases like this that at the last moment uh, a producer such as Lemkin is offering uh, the tribunal uh, to give exculpatory evidence. But this, this is the case, this is the situation right now. And, um, uh, of course, I don't have to remind you, but maybe uh, I, I would have to remind the prosecution about this. One of the, the leading, uh, the leading principles of this, uh, this, this tribunal, of this court, is the ascertainment of the truth. We are looking for the truth. And here we have somebody who is claiming that he has seen hours and hours of footage uh, 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 consisting of very important material directly in relation to the very fact the is he, uh, his film is about to portray. You have decided uh, uh, in your wisdom to add to portray as a, as a crime site um, uh, in addition to the fourth century. Uh, the film is obviously important because it has been shown over and over. And now the very director, the very producer of the film is saying, wait, something is uh, not going well. We have additional footage saying something completely different that is apparently being uh, portrayed. And of course, there's only one thing, Mr. President, you always said, you can do is make sure that this material uh, uh, is available for all parties and for you to make at the end of the day a proper judgment in especially the, effect, uh, the facts that Thank you, President. Uh, Mr. Corbyn, you indicated that um, this, uh, this uh, producer is offering to assist the chamber. Is this uh, your understanding? It's not apparent from the email, and it seems to contradict the experience that the co-investigating judges had. Can you uh, briefly comment on that, please? Okay. This is how I understand his email. Um, he knows we are the defense counsel for Lu He is apparently following this trial. He knows uh, his film is the subject of uh, an important debate. Um, as I understand from uh, also speaking to, uh, to our client, is that there was, a, there was an agreement between our client and the co-producer. Uh, uh, to give the material um, to, a, uh, to the tribunal. That was an agreement made uh, before 2007. Um, apparently, uh, one, one can say that uh, both of them have violated this agreement because they have made the film. That's another, that's another matter of discussion. But from the same token of reasoning, the same rationale, uh, we can say now that if our client is saying, I have no problem anymore with you provide the footage uh, to the chamber, then I can only uh, interpret the email together with uh, what our client is saying, and that he is now willing to uh, offer uh, all his assistance uh, to the chamber. Yes, and uh, what about the witness's journalistic ethics that he repeatedly uh, referred to, um, uh, Mr. Corbyn? I, I have always understood this, uh, and this is something, of course, we respected, that as every journalist, uh, he is protecting his sources. Um, uh, a journalist, uh, when asked, what are your sources, how did you get your information, will always uh, invoke his rights. Um, um, it is Article 10 that the European Convention of Human Rights uh, uh, protecting the sources in, in, in respect of um, 
freedom of speech. Uh, now, if the very source uh, is saying I have no problem if you uh, provide this information, then of course uh, uh, it is my understanding that the journalist himself cannot properly invoke anymore and, and will not do so. Uh, he has right to protect his sources. Just stay on your feet, Mr. Kolpi. Um, and what about the other subjects who are in the um, uh, movie other than your client, Nguyen Chia? Have they uh, waived any rights? Or are you just assuming that that will be the case? That might be the case, but I don't know. មេត្តវិកពេអានឹងគឺអាស្រ័យទៅលើពួកគាត់ហើយអាស្រ័យទៅលើលោករបលែមគីនផងដែរបាទអរគុណនៅមតិយុបល់របស់ពាក្យគី